So let's try an experiment. Let's see if we can replicate the look of medium format film with a regular digital camera. Yeah, so I've been on holiday and uh, that's why there haven't been any videos for a while. Um, I shot that footage there on my little GoPro, which is uh, I got quite recently, great little camera. Um, a lot of fun, 120 frames a second. Uh, quality's rubbish, but you know, it's tiny. Uh, oh, and I meant to wear a glasses now because uh, apparently uh, while my eyes are great on their own like David Bowie and Mick Jagger when you put them together it all goes a bit on the streets of Brazil but today I'm not gonna be talking about tiny cameras like the GoPro I'm going to be talking about medium format because medium format images are absolutely beautiful and obviously the best way to achieve that look is to use a medium format camera but not all of us could afford 43,000 pounds although cheaper cameras are available granted but uh, if you've just got a regular peasant camera, like a full frame 5D or a, uh, even an APS-C like a Fuji or something, then I'm gonna show you firstly how you can use that camera to create an image that its sensor shouldn't really be able to produce. And then secondly, I'm going to look at how we can process that image to make it look like medium format film. And I'm gonna do this by taking the same image with a Hasselblad medium format film camera and I'm also going to use the technique I'm going to talk about with my 5D. So I'll have a digital image and a film image and I'm going to look at the two in Lightroom and I'm going to try and replicate the look of the film image on the digital image and I'm going to save that as a preset which will form part of a larger pack of presets I've been developing based on medium format film and I will make that Lightroom preset pack available to you. Medium format images get their distinctive look from their much larger sensor size than your standard digital camera. And having a larger sensor means you get a finer grain, you get better tonal accuracy, better color accuracy. It's able to pick up more accurate detail. And so you get a sort of perceived level of clarity in the images that you don't get with a 35 mm or an APS-C camera. And by clarity, I don't mean that clarity slider you have in Lightroom. Don't, don't touch that, just don't, yeah, no, ever, don't. An APS-C camera has a sensor of around about 330 mm squared, depending on the make. Uh, a full frame camera or 35 mm camera has a sensor of about 860 mm squared. Now medium format cameras come in all different sizes and ratios, 6x6, 6x7, 6x8, 6x9, and the size is at least 2000 mm squared, um, generally much more than that. So you are talking a significant amount bigger than a full frame or an APS-C camera. So in order to get your sensor to cover a larger area, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take lots of photos and then stitch them together via an automated system that Lightroom has and Photoshop has as well. Primarily made for landscapes, but we're gonna use it here for portraits. And uh, I'm gonna shoot Fred here, who's my subject for the day. And what you wanna do first is to think in terms of a medium format image, six by seven or six by six. And I'm actually gonna compose it on a medium format camera. Luckily Fred's got a Hasselblad, which we've loaded up with film, which will also be nice because then we can compare the film version to the digital version. So ultimately I'm gonna shoot this on my 5D with my 85 mil lens, because here we've got an 80 mil lens, so we kind of want them around about the same. We're gonna use a constant light because the flash sync on here is a very different system to the flash sync on here. It's a very old system and I'm not sure I've got the cables for that. I'm framing this up as a square shot because this is a six by six camera. What's really, really cool about looking in here, you can't see it in the video, but this is actually a 3D image here. It's, it's really nice to, to use. 
So now I'm switching over to the 5D and I'm going to replicate the settings we had on the Hasselblad. We were shooting on portrait film which was 400 ASA, so I'm going to match that with an ISO of 400. That comes out at 1 200th of a second and f2.8. The field of view I'm getting with the 5D from the same distance is about this big but we want to cover a larger area so what I'm going to do is I am going to start in the center to get a nice clean shot of the face and I'm going to work around the edges in a methodical fashion. It's important to make sure you've covered every single bit of the image. It's better to have more shots and not use them than to try and photoshop in something that you didn't shoot because that's going to take you ages. So ideally you'd want to be using a tripod in this situation to make sure you're getting the best angles to stitch together. But I'm not here, I'm just doing this handheld for reasons of laziness. Now probably the most important thing to remember with this method is to keep everything manual. Once you've focused, switch your focus to manual, you do not want that changing. Keep your shutter speed, your ISO, your aperture, everything manual. Even your white balance if you're shooting JPEG. If you're shooting RAW you can do that afterwards but it's also good to just set it just so everything is consistent, you're getting a consistent exposure. All these shots need to look like they're a small part of one bigger shot. Just popping into Soho to get these films developed. You have to do that with film. Stop it by the week, whenever you're around. Yeah. So Great. basically medium format, the colours will be on there. Okay. So develop and scan will be £11 a roll. Brilliant. I've got the film scans back now, so let's take a look at them. So here are our images, and I quite like this first one up here, but it's a bit faded, so let's bring it into Photoshop. So to get rid of these faded blacks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a curves layer. And you see this bit here of the histogram, that is the dark, which is completely missing. So I'm just going to pull the black point up to about here. And there we go, that's, uh, that's a good image. So I brought the film scan into Lightroom and along here we've also got all the 5D images, which is the same portrait but in different pieces and taken digitally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these images here and I'm going to go to Photo, Photo Merge and Panorama. And what this is going to do is it's going to stitch all the images together to create one large image which will still be a raw image which is very useful because then we can edit it. So here's a preview of the image it's put together, looks pretty good. I'm going to click auto crop. Um, I'm using a cylindrical projection but you can check one of the other ones, spherical or perspective depending on what you want, have a look, see how they look for you. Um, there's a little bit of weird artifacting here where it hasn't quite aligned the images. This will be no doubt due to my laziness when not using a tripod. So I'm going to click merge and now it'll merge them all together. So this is our merged image and if we zoom in we can see loads and loads of really nice sharp detail in there, really close in. So the first thing to do is to match the crop. So I'm going to select the reference mode and I'm going to use this film scan as a reference. I'm going to select the crop tool, crop it into about there. Yeah that's quite a good match, uh, slightly different camera position but that's good enough for this demonstration. One of the great things about this image here is it's now a 66 megapixel image and that's far greater than the sensor of my 5D should be able to do. And that means it's about 86 centimeters across if we were to print it out at 240 dpi. So it's a very, very large image. And so now we need to make this digital image look like this film image here. And I've got a load of medium format uh, presets that I've made. I'll take you through my process of making them and tell you a lot more about them in part two of this video. But for now, I'm going to quickly show you how to fix this stuff here. So this is a little quick bonus tip on how to get rid of this weird kind of artifacting where Lightroom hasn't quite aligned these images. It's very easy to do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command E or Control E on a PC to open this up in Photoshop and I'll just quickly hop back to Lightroom here and what I'm going to do is find an image of this here. So we've got this one here I can see there it's working so I'm going to Command E that one that brings that up in Photoshop too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a rectangular marquee, just cut around that bit of the image, copy it, and then paste it here. Should be around about the right size, somewhere around there. Right. I'm going to get the eraser tool, or press E, and if you hold Control and Alt, you can scale it by going left and right, and you can make it softer by going up and harder by going down. So I'm going to want it about that big and full softness. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn the bottom layer off. I'm just going to paint away the hard edges 
Um, but what you've, if you can notice, I don't know if you can notice on the screen, it's, it's a slightly different white balance or some kind of different lighting, I don't know, but it's gone a bit pink, whereas the wall's a bit blue. I'll just, uh, I'm just gonna actually, I'm just gonna quickly use a hue and saturation to really show you this on the screen. So I've made this ridiculously the wrong color just to make it easy for you to see here, but you don't need to spend ages matching the colors up by tweaking curves and color balance and everything. All you need to do is drop down this blending menu here and choose luminosity. And there you'll see that all it's done is taken the lights and darks and it's ignored the color. So there we have a fixed picture.